I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. My name is Kerry Stinson, and as always, I'm thrilled you're here. This is such an exciting day. I love talking to Barney people, and this is one of my favorites, Lindy Heath. Lindy was one of our choreographers. I just loved working with her. She is such a sweet person and so talented, and I am so glad she's here today. And here's Lindy. How are you? Lindy, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. This I've been looking forward to this for weeks. I'm so excited. I am so excited as well. It's just, it, awesome. I haven't seen your face in a while and I yeah. am just so glad to see it again. I know it is wonderful. I, I'm just, I was just thinking, gosh, when you have, when you leave little nuggets that like this in your life, you think, oh, we're going to get together all the time. I just love these people so much. And then life just starts zooming and in years are, have gone by and you're like, well, why didn't we do that? You know? It's well, tough. I know, and I, I I blame a little bit social media because it lets us all Absolutely. see what everyone is doing. Yeah, so we feel like we've caught up, but we haven't seen each other's faces in person. I know it's so true. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. It's so weird to think that like there was a, a period where we literally almost saw each other every day. You know, know. we came to work together and, and then all of a sudden we didn't. I know, I know. it's crazy. It's crazy. You know what, Carrie, I was thinking about when I was thinking of this, like the first project that I got to work on, I don't know if you remember this, but I got, to, I worked on the uh, firehouse video, which I think was like the very last full length, you know, um, video that, that was shot. I think, I think the that rest was the was first there. one that you worked on. Yeah. Oh my yes. gosh. That was one of the toughest things we ever did. I know. And that was my start. So it's kind of amazing. I think that I kept going, but that's how much fun I had with y'all. It was so tough. It was so hot. It was so all these things, but I got to rehearse with y'all and get to know you and everything. Like we'd rehearse back at the studio. We didn't really go on location until we were ready to shoot. And so I'd made friends with y'all. We were all just great, but I hadn't seen you. <clears throat> I hadn't seen you in the Barney in bar as barney yet right so <clears throat> i know you remember this because it was like massive trucks y'all had a dressing truck the whole thing and i can't remember what room we were in but finally it was like okay y'all have been in the truck and you stepped down onto like a little thing that was just going to lower you to the ground like right. a superhero entrance yeah and i'm like <laughs> i was like standing there going barney oh my gosh like it just I was like, I got teary. I think I went up and hugged you and said, thank you for all the showers I got when my kids were little because they were so mesmerized by you and I could catch a shower or I could, you know, it was so hilarious, but it, it literally teared me up because I just couldn't believe, you know, everything that went into it all, and that you were just standing there in front of me and, you know, and I was just loved every minute of it, but yeah, you're right, man, that video, whoo, <laughs> worst sunburn I've ever had in my life for sure. And I can't even imagine y'all must've been so hot. So, I mean, ugh. I, I remember talking to some of the producers saying, well, you know, June, it usually rains. And I was like, it's Texas. What do you mean? It usually rains. <laughs> No, no, -uh. it was so hot and it was so like, we were outside so much and it was so bare and crisp and y'all were down in that little ravine and yeah. stuff. And, oh, I just thought this is so crazy. And then we'd shoot some in the firehouse and it was like a luxury to go, oh, well, there's a little bit of air. There's a little bit, but, oh, it was so great. It was so great. Well, and, and you, you know, you know, I say my boys, but they're your boys too. Yes. You know, yes. Jeff and Kyle, they, I mean, they really had to fight that heat. And I, I felt yes. so bad for those boys. They did. 
And they wanted to fight through because they knew, you know, every time they needed to get air, it took everything down for a minute and had took a while to get it back up. And I'm like, oh, I just, I can just remember standing there going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And it, you know, made everybody work harder to try to get shots faster, you know, like just go, right. we've got to get this right. We've got to get this right. And then there were the voices sitting up on the hill underneath the shade. <laughs> Which, of course, you know, and I've told this before, they let us know that, by the way. We hear that in there. Oh, yeah. You know, there's, yeah. can someone get us a drink? Yeah. <laughs> could, could I get an umbrella? Please? I need a fan, yeah. please. Uh -huh. You're like, oh. <laughs> when yeah. I come out of, when I come off this, out of this ravine. Yeah. I'm going to take you, <laughs> you down. You, you better be gone. You better, <laughs> and I know where you live. <laughs> you better be home because I'm coming for you. That was so true. I just remember what I was thinking, because I just, again, it was my first thing that I was doing and I was just so in. And I went down to stand on the side of that ravine, you know, because, and finally somebody walked up with a huge umbrella and went, Lindy, you have, because they could see the back of my legs right. and the back of my legs were just like, fire red but I was just so in it I wasn't even thinking about it and I didn't feel it and they were like you got to you're going to be in the hospital if you don't get out of the sun you know and I was like right we just gotta get it we just got to get this you know it was intense but boy that video turned out so great well it did and we had been doing that for a long time right before yeah. I'd been doing this for 12 years at that point sure. so we knew how to handle our heat and you know yeah. how to take care of ourselves but yeah. uh, yeah, that was a crazy thing. And I think about it now because that whole area is is blown up, right? Frisco oh, sure. was I mean, we were we were out at a fire department. There was nothing else out there. There was nothing else out there. And that firehouse was brand new. Brand new. I know. When I think about that, that just cracks me up because you're right, it is blown up. It doesn't look anything the same. So and there's that, no way you could do what we did, but I mean we just yeah. took everything yeah. out there. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got a kick out of, you know, I always get kicked too when you take it into the real world because those firefighters never seen anything like that either. So they, that's, <laughs> they we're just going, what are we doing? Yeah. Is that hilarious? And I remember in, uh, at one of, at one point, y'all, they were, they have a little exercise room in that firehouse, like a little yeah. work room. And we shot some piece of a song in there, like on some of the equipment, like mm -hmm. through the glass. I have a picture of like Elise LaValle and I, cause she was my assistant on that yeah. one. And, you know, just like look, with our headphones on looking through the glass and y'all can see there, this just looks like you're working out. And I was like, oh my God, I'm sure the firefighters were going dinosaurs in our uh, workout room. So awesome. And shot in the kitchen. We just shot everywhere in there. You well, know? in that truck. Yeah. Yeah, I was climbing oh, on the fire on the fire truck too. That's right. And <laughs> running around the neighborhood. Oh my gosh. I forgot about that. Because I was just standing back waiting for y'all to circle around again. And oh my gosh. That was Which, we love that. You know, I, I love that. I always talk about that. I loved the stunt aspects of things. I love going yeah. into the real world. I love, you know, studio's fun, but it's, you yeah. know, it's enclosed, right? And so to go do these things are just a blast. They are. And it just, then it makes it even more like, well, just Barney lives in the real world with the rest of us. You know, it's like, it was so much fun. Um, I was thinking about what you were talking about, like talking to the voices and going as soon as I get out of here, but I have this one memory and we were in the studio, Carrie. So I'm guessing we were doing an episode or something. But y'all were, we were shooting over kind of by where the gazebo was. And mm -hmm. I was back at the state, you know, like where the, where the screens were and stuff. And we were shooting a number that I had choreographed and I'm on the headset and I'm just saying, Hey, can we just shoot it one more time? Because there's just an angle we really didn't get. And somebody goes, do you think Carrie's okay? And I'm like, Oh God, he's totally fine. He's completely fine. And like, I'm forgetting that you can hear me. And I look around the screen and this is what you're, you're, you've got your arms folded and you're <laughs> tapping your foot. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's okay. Let me go talk to him. <laughs> It was hilarious. And I, I literally, I'm going to send this to you after this, because I took a picture, like I had to snap a picture because I was like, I think this is the first time that Barney's gotten mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Barney doesn't get mad at a lot of people, but Barney just got mad at me. But of course you were like, of course I'm fine. Shoot it again, whatever you need. And I'm like, but it was so hilarious. And I just went, 
Yikes. There's nothing like Barney looking at you like, <laughs> what are you saying? And what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I always love having fun with that yeah. stuff. And I, you know, the funny thing is it happened a lot. People forget like that I could hear that I that oh, yeah. decisions were made all it. the time. I know. <laughs> right here. You can't, you can't help because you're just trying to do and you're like, oh, who can hear me? Who can't? Or how many times I had full conversations with someone who couldn't hear me because I forgot to push a button. And you're like, wait, Linda, you're gonna have to say all that again. I'm like, oh crap. So, oh my gosh, it would just crack me up though. And of course, some of my very favorite memories are in, literally in between shooting when the voices and the bodies would start having a conversation completely separate from what was supposed to be going on. And you're over here working and trying to figure out what we're going to get next. And then all of a sudden you just see people just on the floor laughing because the bodies and the voices were having this great conversation. And Oh, I, I love those moments. They're hilarious, you know? So well, you had to have fun. I mean, you just, ha it's, it's you hard to explain to, to people when I tell, you know, that it was, it was basically, you know, four and a half days, right? Yeah. From episode, you know, we have for us as, as dinosaur, as the bodies, you know, Monday's rehearsal day rehearsal. and then yeah. any like costume stuff or anything you had yeah. to do there to get ready for the week. And then we shot Tuesday, Wednesday, and part of Thursday. Half of Thursday, yeah. A, a half a day, and then if there was something they needed for next week, and then Friday we'd have that usually a dance rehearsal for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. And there and you go. And you're done. There you go. Yeah, I know. I mean, when you think about that, that is crazy. I mean, that is crazy. But it, but it just kept. It was like a well-oiled machine that just ran and ran and ran. We knew what we needed to do. Got in there and did it. It was scheduled well to be in this, get everything that was in this spot before you move, get everything in this spot before you move. I don't know if you remember, I'm, I'm sure you do, Carrie, but like one of my favorite that I tell all the time, do you remember the episode we did where there was a grandfather, somebody's grandfather and tap you, dance. yes, you did like a soft shoe. Yeah. With the grandfather. Yes. And, I was so excited about that because it was different. You know, it was like a different kind of number. And it was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I love, I would love that. I, I love the idea of a soft shoe. I think that's going to be so much fun. And so we started planning it. And I said to the prop department, I want appearing canes. And they were like, what's an appearing cane? And I was like, come on, you've never worked with an appearing cane? Come on, there's so much fun. So I said, order me some, you know, this was weeks away or whatever. And so they did research, they ordered appearing canes and all this stuff. And like a week or so before we shot, I'm like sitting at my desk and I get a call from the props department and they're like, Lindy, Lindy, your appearing canes are here. And I mean, I jumped up and I ran in there and this is the picture I saw when I walked in. The guy, because they had never done, worked with them before, so they didn't right. know how they worked, right? right? And they're on a spring system. And so they were truly standing at one end of the room and the appearing canes were just shooting out of their hands to flying to the other side of the room. And they were like, I don't get it. I don't understand. I'm like, everybody stop. Do not shoot the appearing cane across the room again. Let me show you how it works. It was hilarious. You I mean that team and the things they did and all. And then like for you and I, it was so much fun because we had to figure out how to get that appearing. You know, it's really only like this bit, you know, it's right. small the size of the palm of your hand, you know, the mechanism, but then you had Barney's hands and you had to be able to get the button and both sides had to pop out of your hand. And people were like, Lindy, I just don't know. And I'm like, no, 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 we're going to do it. And we did. It was so cute. And, you know, then the a cane just appeared in Barney's hand. And then, you know, he had it to like put on the ground and dance around. I loved that moment. It was just so much fun. That number was great. I'll still go back and watch that and go, yep, that's a cute, cute number. So well, I'm going to, I'm going to rewind things. back for a second. Yeah. Explain this a little bit because what people don't know. So I had been doing this for, you know, my gosh, 12, 14 oh. years at that point when you came in. And so right. I worked with a lot of different people and we were a little traditional in the way we, you know, it was a development over sure. that. That's what, why this is so important this conversation and you 
because yeah. you took it to another place. Well, you, you, thank you. And, and you, it was very exciting for me. You know, I, you probably know this. I've said this before, but I was not a dancer in any aspect of any way. I just told him I could dance. My mom yeah. taught me how to dance and yeah. I did it for a long time. Right. And so, so any of those moments were so important because right. I'm telling you, I wasn't, but there was something about, I, I felt like you always would push me. You would push Kyle. You would put, push us and yeah. take us to new yeah. places and introduce, like I had no idea what an appearing king was. Yeah, I know, so right? You, you, know, you took this. us to these places. Yeah. And so it really started on that, as you mentioned, the firehouse video. So yeah. we could all feel it. We could feel a new energy in the room. We could feel, Good. you know, you guys, you, and I always think about Joel and, yeah, and sure. Elise and all of them. Right. You treated us and took us in places as dancers mm -hmm. and didn't worry about the costume as much, which we enjoyed yeah. because there are people sometimes go, well, they have limitations. You never yeah. did that in any aspect, in any way. If you had an yeah. idea or you guys want to try something, we would try it. Yeah. We were doing it. And I, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it pushed us it. in new ways. And at that time, I think I probably needed to be pushed in a, in a, in a challenging way when it came to choreography and dance and all of that stuff. Yeah. So. Oh, well, you were sweet to just go along. You know, there were, I'm sure there were times where you were going, um, honey, you have got to sit down. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Because I did, I came into the world, I guess, sort of like you're saying, not knowing as much about maybe some limitations. I do remember there was a day where you went, come on, Lindy, meet me in the costume area. And I was like, okay. And you went today, you're putting on the Barney costume. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Cause you were like, I need you to, and really, honestly, it was great for me to do that. Because it really then made me go, uh-huh, I see. Okay, I got it. But also then I could see more about like, you know, the feelings of what could move really well. I mean, it helped me to be a better choreographer. You were so smart to make me do that. And I was like, well, I didn't know that was happening today, but great, let's go. Well, but, uh, and you know, I, you don't know what a big moment it was for me to go tell my mother that I did a soft shoe routine. I know. <laughs> oh. Because she was, you know, she was a professional dancer. She was a professional yeah. dancer. Oh, and, yeah. She was an amazing dancer. She was yeah. my original choreographer, and yeah. And so to get to tell her, you know, yeah, she was like, okay, look what we're I, doing. I see that? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we did so many fun things, and and props. You know, I again talking about going over there, and I'd I'd go, what are y'all working on today? And they're like, we're trying to make this thing made out of popsicle sticks fly you know i'm like great good luck good for you <laughs> love it go for it let me know if it happens yeah it just it just was like the most magical world to be in every day i have to say it was hard not to be happy because you just felt like you know you were making magic and i'm sure you know for me coming in i hadn't been there as many years as everybody else so i was just like i'm in the world i'm in this most magical world so i'm happy let's go it was so much fun and i think carrie like to I, I this just popped into my head but and this is a little bit more serious but some of the more and you had so many more experiences of this than i did is when there would be a day set aside for um a child that maybe was not expected to live too much longer and this was their final win you know like those moments i I mean, it just meant everything to everybody that was a part of it. And I can remember like maybe the first time for me again, because y'all had to talk me through several things. It was a new world for me. And, um, and you know, that the Make-A-Wish Foundation was going to be there and you, you kind of talked me through what that was going to look like. And I was on the set to just see if I could help with anything, like if a song came up or if something, you know, like, cause it was very, um, it just kind of went with the flow depending yeah. on the family or the, the, the child or whatever. And I just, there was just no way to prepare yourself for that. You know, it just meant so much. And I can't even imagine what it was like to be you and to be in those moments because it was just beautiful, you know? Well, it's, I always say, you know, it's such a gift. 
Yes. What they gave to me, not what I was able to give to them, what they gave to me, what they gave to you, what they gave to all of us. You know, all it really was, and you just had to remember this, is that they were seeing their best friend. That's exactly right. You know, so. Yeah. You know, we had to keep it. You know, you you're you're really. I know it's a, kind of sounds like an out of body experience, but you're gone, yeah. right? So for your sure. whole mindset is just being that person and being Barney and being that, and obviously for Jeff and for yeah, Kyle as well. That's all we're doing. That's in right. Those aspects of it, and yeah. just kind of letting the magic happen from there, and that yeah. connection with these kids yeah. and the things they would do and what they would say, and yes, was unbelievable. And yes, it's just absolutely beautiful just be in that moment yeah and and you know dean would do such a good job too of just you know communicating and using their names and you know then they would say a song and you know all of us and it would just be like i mean i loved just how in it you all were and that you would be willing to just do anything like you said for that person to have that experience with their best friends you know and i mean yeah, you can't prepare yourself for what that's going to, like for me being a step away just to yeah. call music or whatever, but to watch it and to know what it meant to that family, because it also for their family, it's a healing, it's such a huge moment for their family that have been caretaking this human being during all this time to get to have this experience, to feel like things are being done also for them to create this, you know, moment for their loved one. And I, it just blew me away. I'm still not sure that I've ever really had an experience like that or been able to just be a part of something so special, you know, and it would then change the next week of shooting. It would change the next, you know, it gave, I'm just, I could get teary eyed just thinking about it because it gave everything a purpose again, sometimes, you know, and you would go, and this is exactly why we're all doing this and how important it is to get it right. How important it is for everything to be created where all of these dinosaurs can make best friends with these people's people on the other side of the screen. Well, I have been probably doing those for 14 years before I met you. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I was in 1990 stories. Yeah. Either 91 or 92. And I did my first one at children's in Dallas and I was 23 years old. Oh, Carrie. And I had to grow up so quick because I didn't understand that. I didn't understand, you know, I hadn't seen life or death like that. I hadn't seen a child having life or death. I didn't see the parents going through that stuff. Right. Wow. And, And, you know, it's the the love that you see in that in Mm -hmm. every aspect of everything you realize how strong that is and how powerful that is yeah and uh you know i always laugh people come to me and they'll say you just got to be sick of singing that i love you song and i go do you understand how powerful that is yeah but i know every episode that we do that yeah those kids sick and not sick yeah live for that moment and i always felt like performing it with every yeah being i had because i knew it's so special important that was and you'd never go through the motions on something so important no no because it means it means so many so much to so many you know and and it's so funny to me like even now because now i i teach at a fine arts school and i have you know high schoolers that completely and you know what we sing the cleanup song you know when it's time to clean up the room we just do and they know it and they love it and it like it's so funny how things are just like embedded in the people that grew and they grew up with like you know not even in the biggest time of Barney but they still watched it you know and it still meant so much to them and I just I, you know, I love that it goes on forever and it does stick in their bodies and their, that's like Barney told me that never let the water run. I turn it off while I brush my teeth. I mean, that's just, it's so interesting how it just kind of sticks with people and it becomes a part of their whole upbringing for sure. You know, their upbringing, which I absolutely love. Well, but and yeah, the part right. I love so much is every person I ever worked with on that show and any aspect of it believed it. And, sure. and it, none of it was about 
money. None of it was about being on TV. It was something that we all knew how important it was. We believed in it, the authenticity yeah. of it. Sure. You know, when they meet anyone these days, we're exactly like we were yeah. back then. And yeah. so giving those messages out to people was easy because yeah. I absolutely believe in all of that stuff. That's exactly right. And knew that knew its importance. Yeah. I felt that way every single time. And I that's partly why, besides the people that I love so much, that I loved coming to work. Because you knew you knew you had a purpose. And it was an important purpose and all of that. So it just, it was just magical times for sure. It was really wonderful. I have to tell you, Lindy, and the funny thing is when I think of you and my favorite moment is actually not really with me. And I was there and I was yeah. part of this, but okay. it's you and those elves. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorite episodes. Yes. See, you have to deal with those three. <laughs> I, I have pictures of that too. I have pictures of that too. And they were like, they were so excited. They were having so much fun and they wanted to do everything. And I, I know you remember this, but you know, the, like the Santa's workshop was really kind of a smallish area because yes. You know, Bob Valley had built it, you know, to the to the left, I guess, if you were looking at it, of the park. And it was gorgeous. And it was magical because there were all these wrapped presents everywhere. It was beautiful. But really, when you walked in there, it wasn't just a massive amount of space. But we were doing all these big numbers in there, honestly, with them. Oh, God, they were so funny, Gary. And I don't know if you remember this, but like, like upstage of that little area, there was a wrapping station, like a gift wrapping station. Yeah. And there were all these rolls of gift wrap on the wall that could pull down and, you know, rip off or whatever they were supposed to. Right. And so I was like, well, we got to use that. That can't just be like background, you know? So I would have them run you know, pull the paper down, <laughs> rip it off, and then run back with the paper over their heads. I mean, we must have some of the funniest outtakes from that going completely wrong or just like falling over them or ripping in half and going, but they wanted so badly to just make it. Ma and it was, it was magical. It, I loved that episode too. And they did a wrap, you know, <laughs> They had, and I, it was so much fun and it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. Bombo Valley just completely outdid himself on that one. You just kind of want to a lot as he did a lot, as he did a lot. And I still get to see Bob. He designs for me some at my school, which I love. And I, yeah, you would just go, well, Bob, you, you've done it again. You've made a magical world, but yeah, I loved that. I have a picture of me like next to them, the three, all three of them in their elf costumes. And I've got my headset on and we're talking and they're just like this, you know, just looking like what next, what can we do next? Make it harder, do more. I love it. We had a blast. We did have a blast. Well, I mean, you know, these are some of my, my favorite people on this planet, Jeff and Kyle. Sure. Adam yes. and and, Adam. and and Jeff, you know, I, I've known Jeff for a long time and he's absolutely him. a piece of work. Yes, and so he is. when I knew what you were doing, I was like, oh, good luck. Like you're getting him out of a car. Good luck with good him. <laughs> good luck with him. And then you're going to put the other two with that. Good luck. <laughs> I'll just be over here watching. But it was. So I had the easiest fun. job doing, you know, because <laughs> I, you know, Bernie's in that, but that was. Yeah. For me, the easiest thing in the world. I was like, yeah. you've got the hardest job dealing with got free. <laughs> but they were so excited and they looked so great. I mean, they looked so great. So yeah, that will always be one of my favorites. I mean, I just, and I have to say too, Carrie, one of the, I always loved it when we were working with an animal. I'm sure you talked about I gotta, this. I got to stop you really quick, Lindy, because okay. you don't know this. Yeah. But do you know that I mean, it was December of this year. Yeah. Jeff and Kyle were being elves again. <gasps> they go do parties and stuff. Oh, yeah. And they'll send, yes. And they'll send me a picture out and of nowhere. Right. And I just break down laughing. And my wife is like, what, what? is that? And they, yeah. She knows them. And the she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, I know. These boys yeah. are still dressing up. Yeah. Mormon. 
Yeah. And they're doing their thing because they know how to do it. I love, <laughs> I love that. Good for them. Uh, Good for I'm them. sorry. Go no, on, go always on. <laughs> help their heart for sure. I was just thinking like, I loved it when we worked with animals. I remember I, and some of the things that, you know, had to happen with that. And imagine animals, you know, seeing Barney and BJ and baby bop and, you know, up, everybody, you know, it, I, I was just amazed at that, but y'all were always so good to just go. That's a whole different ball game. They have to get used to us. The animal has to get used to us. We have to learn, you know, the, the calls or what we're going to do to get the animal to do what we need them to do. They need to not be scared of us, meaning y'all. And I, it was magical to watch. And again, it would become like you were saying before, it's like, you could tell the animal was like, oh, my best buddy. I love these friends. It was I so had much done fun. a photo shoot at the Fort Worth Zoo at one point. Yeah, yeah. So I got to shoot with the giraffes and all of yeah. that. And I, I'd have to find the picture. I have the most unbelievable picture of the three of us holding snakes. Oh, <laughs> my God. Like a python. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And it's like going by our mouths and stuff like that. Yeah. I was just something we we loved the adventures. Yeah, I loved any adventure. You you know, can you roller yeah. skate? Can you jump rope? Yeah, let's do yes. it. <laughs> let's try it. I know. Well, those things too make me think of Kyle because you know Kyle also because he was BJ and BJ was so athletic. He was a young boy, you know, and the things that he would do: skateboard, ride a bike, play basketball, do all those things. You know, in the costume uh amazing there's one i remember i don't know what the, i don't remember what the episode was but bj was pretending to be a superhero he was a superhero and so we had we had moved the picnic table over to the center green space because he was laying on it on his stomach you know and we were not shooting the picnic table right and just getting him you know and holding his body up you know where it looked like bj was flying and i was like oh my gosh that you know and I was just right in front of him going you okay you okay can we do it again you got it tell us if you're not you know it but it it would just look magical when it was done but the physical strength for all of you and the, all of that it it was mind-blowing and I, I had so much respect for all of you and the amount the things that you would do to just go yeah we want to get it right we want to make it the best we can make it because there's always other options right. but but to be able to just make these dinosaurs feel but I think that's what drew them so much to the kids because they were like I do that I can do that or I want to try to do that just like they are you know I don't want to give up so I loved it well you know I toured with with Kyle <laughs> for five years and yeah. he was you know I remember the first day I ever met him he came on the bus with his skateboard I mean, he was like 19 years old or something like that. Oh my god! And fearless. I mean, fearless. Fearless. <clears throat> yeah. I, 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 he's one of my favorite people on this planet. I mean, he I is just, and his energy is still to this day. And he's just about the nicest person you'll ever meet. Ever. He's I know. Just it. got the good, just such a good heart. Yeah. And he, absolutely. You know, and there's no and he, way he's ever going to let Barney do something he can't do. <laughs> It's a challenge. You're on. I know it's so true. And he and Patty together, uh, they're just a, such a good team. They, you know, they listen to each other, you know, and, and Patty knew him so well and he knew Patty so well. And it was just like, it was awesome. Just awesome. The, the best story of Kyle, and I don't know if you've ever heard this, but we yeah. were touring. We'd been out for a yeah. year and we were, um, Alabama. I think we were in Alabama. I think okay. we were in Alabama and we got off. We were very competitive, very competitive. I mean, I've been wrestling with it. these dudes for years. Yeah. All of yeah. And we raced off stage to see who could get to the dressing room first in costume. Yeah. Sprinting backstage and it narrowed into a tunnel and we hit each other at the same time and bounced yeah. off. Fired <laughs> off, and yeah. of course, everyone's shaking their head like those two are. What in the world? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That is hilarious. And it makes me think of like, I don't know what it was, Carrie, but like, you know, so many times when we would shoot, like if we had, if things had been going on in the caboose and we were shooting coming out. So the first shot had to be, and sometimes it was like in the middle of a number because yeah. like the number would have started in the caboose and then come out and it would be like, okay, we got to get the shot of everyone coming out the door. And it, I could just remember so many shots where like you would be first and we'd be shooting and the music would be running. And then all of a sudden you would just see your arms drop and your foot start to tap because everybody had just run smack dab into you. Like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, Kyle was like right behind you or you just see Barney, you know, have a little like, <laughs> jerk forward because someone and you were like okay back it up let's go again and you would turn around and look at them and they'd be like I mean it was so like really Barney and baby bop and whatever going sorry Barney we got a little too excited ran into you just hilarious stuff and then you'd reset and go well that was worth that I, somebody <laughs> keep that somebody keep that I want to watch that again in a little while for sure oh so, my God. so Lenny what I want to talk to you about is because this was so fascinating to me is that mm -hmm. what you did is you took those routines, the songs that we knew so well, I had done thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of times and you were able to sprinkle the, the Lindy magic on there oh, and, so and, and take them so that we were still doing the choreography that the kids knew for sure but yes. able to to put new life in them i always think about raindrops for example or mm -hmm. knickerbocker right so i want to talk about what you kind do you go in knowing yeah. that this choreography has been done right like from the beginning so you can't they know you know ah, 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 yeah ah. some of that has to stay for sure but yeah. how do you take that mm -hmm. and add something or so talk about that you going in and uh, what that was like because that was it just felt like there was this new life. Yeah, I appreciate that. I love you so much. much. Oh, thank you. Well, I think for me, you know what? It, it, it's awesome coming into a magical world that already exists because I would really study what had come before, you know, and why it was there and what was important about it and the things that the kids especially connected to. But one of the things I think that helped me is that I was working with kids at the time and I had two small children at home. And so the fun thing to me, like I was teaching music and different programs and whatever, and I always love to watch the individuality of each child, right? Because you might teach them something and what, maybe they're going to perform it in front of their parents or maybe they're going to perform it, but they always have their own little spin on it. Do you know what I mean? I and they always have something that makes it unique for them or when they hear the music, it affects them in a different way. And so I think I just approached it in that way to say, Barney, BJ, Baby Bop, you know, all of them, um, everybody, the children, even the children on the show, when you hear songs you love, you still add your own magic. You know, you, you right. add your okay, I know this, but watch me do it kind of element. Do right. you know what I mean? I do. And I think that that helped me to just be able to go, what is that individuality that could make something, you know, just a little bit different or have a new energy to it? Because I also would think there's also new children seeing it and it's a new time period and music sounds a little different to them. And you know, the thing, the other things they're seeing on TV or they're seeing at home are a little bit different. So how do we add that element to it? And honestly, I just got inspired also from watching y'all, you know, and I would even think there's still, there's things we can do with I Love You at the end that would feel like, again, just sort of like you were saying about that song, that it isn't just something that we do by rote, right. but, but like, there are times where you sing, where you have moments like that with people because things are very upbeat and fun. There are times where you have moments like that with people because there's been a tragedy or there's been right. something very heartfelt. So what do you do differently for all of those moments that still have the familiarity, but a connection that is about that moment, not just about, this is what we always tap on to the end, right. you know? Or what do we, and so, and then I think I was just inspired about with how much, again, you were saying, you know, whether it was competition or whether it was just give me more, give me something like, 
I just kept going, why not? Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? We can. I remember, Carrie, you asking that question because when I came on, it was a really interesting time in, in the Barney, you know, history. Yeah. And it was trying to morph a little bit. And there were discussions of trying to make things look more natural. But yet, how do you do that? And I remember one of the producers at the time, I think our head producer was saying, I don't want there to be big perfect finishes to songs like a big huge pose at the end that's completely put together and I kind of came back and said okay well listen and I think I videoed a couple of things like in my preschool you know with some preschoolers I said I get with you that it shouldn't look perfect but you show me a time that there isn't a big finish on a song that a child doesn't figure out what that big finish is for them whether they throw their arms out or whether they Oh, you know, they don't just stop and walk away. Right. The music tells them what to do, right? The music is telling them what to do. So I can remember kind of challenging those, those discussions to say, okay, it doesn't have to be this to look planned, but it still needs to be this because nobody ignores what the music is telling them to do. You know what I mean? When you right, listen to a piece of mu music, it tells your body what you want to do. When there's a big finish, you can be in the kitchen making dinner and you need to put that big finish on. Do right. you know what I mean? Because the do. music is telling you to do that. So I loved those music meetings too. I'll tell you, Carrie, because that was like the week before, let's say we're shooting, right. maybe two weeks before, whatever, you know, where we'd have a music meeting with Joe and he's creating but also not knowing what's in your head for the vision. And there were times where I would say, can you give me two more bars in the middle? Because I want to get them out of the, you know, caboose into the, and I need that music. And here's what I'd love for it to sound like, or I really want them to have this moment. Could we put in some like drum crashes here because I'm going to do a step. So like being able to work with another artist to like, you know, highlight those things. Right huge you know huge so I really appreciate you saying that I feel, I'm so glad that it felt that way to y'all yeah. because I didn't know any you know I was just coming in going here's what I have to offer here's what I'm hearing and you know I'm sure there were times where it was frustrating to people I'm like I can remember with Fred who I probably directed with more than anybody I think just how right. it worked between he and Brian but you know I can remember having times with Fred where he would go, Lindy, we cannot do it this way. And I would go, Fred, you have to tell me why. Do you know what I mean? Like, I would just keep going. You have to tell me why. Explain to me, because maybe I can flip it around to where we still can do it that way. Explain right. to me. And, and he would, and he'd be so patient with me, you know, and he'd sit and go, because if a camera shot go, and I'd go, okay, got <laughs> it. I got it. All right, let me work on it a minute and I'll come back and I'll have something else, you know, because it is a different world. It's a different world. And there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about it. You know, I would well, just. And you were involved, right, with bringing in Elise. And yes. Joel, yes. Carol, all of that. And Michael. Yes. Michael. Because, <laughs> yes. Because, yes. you know, I we as. The, the body actors will never forget Joel Farrell for the first time. I yeah. mean, that was a new level for us. For sure. I, I mean, that was some yeah. of the coolest stuff ever. Joel and, doesn't take no for an answer either. Oh my gosh. Like, he was <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. And, he's and Elise was amazing. And then, I, you yeah. know, I always think about Michael. Yeah. Because we did that Halloween yes. episode and he yeah. had Kyle and I, and, and I think Jeff doing Thriller. We did parts yes. of Thriller. And you did. for us, we thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. And I had never, ever yeah. had a choreographer come in. You go, we're doing Thriller. We're doing yeah. Thriller. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my, this is awesome. Yeah. The and kids they know it too, right? And they, they see the fun and they see this. And we're yeah. taking these dinosaurs in new, new places. Yeah. And it's all about sure. having fun. Yes. We're having fun. So yeah. that was Oh just, my so gosh. We well, didn't know. I mean, funny. it was who's coming in next? What are we doing? Yeah. Where are we going? Where I mean, yeah. 
Who's going to judge us to do what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so funny because Joel and Michael and I all grew up in the same worlds. You know, we performed together, we worked together and we, you know, so we, our brains a little bit kind of went directionally similar, you know? Right. And um, it's really funny though, now that you bring it up, My Michael's in town. I cannot wait to tell him about this. That's so awesome. But it was One, so awesome. I mean, it yeah. was Kyle yeah. and I just were like, yes, we were <laughs> here we go. So excited doing this. Totally do that. Yeah. I love that. And and for Michael, for me, for Joel, there's nothing going. Why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't <laughs> we try? There's nothing that says we can't do that. Yeah. I loved it. But I'll uh, Carrie, I can't remember. I feel like this was a video. But where, you know, Barney was kind of going around the world. And do you remember where we hired like the three waiters that kind of- I was just going to bring that up. Yeah. We went to France. Because one of those was Joel. I know it was. And, so, and, and I, I was- sat there in, in amazement. I sat yeah. there going through rehearsal. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Here we go. <laughs> and it was so funny because even for me, because Joel and I had worked together so much. Yes. And so um, I remember him coming in and I said- Okay, Bunny, I'm your choreographer today. Follow my instructions because it's usually the other way around. Right. He's like, sister, no problem. You just tell me what to do. <laughs> and it was, and then I remember afterwards he walked up, he went, cute number. I said, thank you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> he was like being so hilarious. But that was so cute. They were awesome. We had those trays that strapped onto their hands and the food was on, and we were doing all this twirling and it was adorable and I loved it, but it's so true. It's like the elves. It's like anytime someone got to do something that was not what they originally did, or they were out of the bodies or they were whatever. It was like, yes, yes, this is going to be so much fun. Well, so and, and it comes it. across to the audience. It comes across to the kids, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it gives the performer too new life. It's like a whole different like way of thinking of things and doing stuff it's so much fun. I mean, just so, so much fun. I, one of the most magical things for me too, like I said earlier, is I had little kids, you know, when, when I was getting to do this and the days that they would come in and be extras or whatever, right. it's so wonderful for me to be, for them to see what I did for them to be in that magical world. They still talk about it. Riley has on her phone, like a little thing of her counting to 10, you know, right. when she's on and we have pictures because it just meant so much to them. And y'all were always so kind to them after a long day you'd be exhausted and you'd still come over and take pictures with them and let them give you hugs and I uh, just respected it so much because again I think we all cared for each other so much right that we wanted our worlds to be good we wanted our worlds at home to be good because we were going to be better when we were together right we wanted everyone to feel like you know, there, that there was, we all knew there was so much value in what we were doing. Right. We all wanted to give even more of that if we could to each other. Right. At least for me, I was so able to do that over that five, six year period that I was there because it just naturally happened. You know, you wanted to be, you wanted to soak up every moment. Nobody knew, nobody knew exactly when, when it might come to an end or not. Right. But everyone just, there was just this feeling of how special it was and that you knew you needed to soak in every moment. And, right. you know, the schedule sometimes could be really tough. The, you know, like you said, the weeks were not easy sometimes for right. sure. And wanting to make that not, not just what we were giving other people on the other side of the screen, but what we were giving each other. And how we were making the day special and joyful. There was always laughter. I cannot hardly, I just don't really remember. Even when things sometimes got intense or right. we were running over or we were, you know, we were in overtime or whatever. And there was laughter and there were moments of like, it's still joyful. It's right. still joyful. It just has to be. And it is, it, we didn't even have to work that hard at that part of it. It just was joyful. Well, so, it's why we love so much, Jeff and Kyle, that you all got to see the Make-A-Wishers. We, yeah. we had seen it. We'd been, you For know, sure. we'd done concerts and all kinds of stuff. 
Yes. So for you all to see that, and it is just a little bit of a reminder of, of who's watching and what effect yeah. we're having. And That's when we exactly say we, right. we're not talking about just the dinos. We're talking about every person, everyone's job, everything they did was so important yes. to making that whole thing happen. And exactly. I think for you all to see that and to see the family's reaction. Yeah. Huge. You know, I remember the first one that I was a part of that one of the producers said, do you want to be in the room? It's really hard, Lindy, especially when you have little kids at home. And I was like, yeah, no, I want to be in the room. I definitely want to be in the room. I know it's going to be hard. And I did. I mean, I went home that night and just Oh, cause you'd really work hard to hold it together in the room with the families and everything and just make it all about joy. But boy, it is, but boy, it makes you appreciate, you know, I would just sit on the couch with my girls in my arms and realize how, you know, right. every day is a gift. All of those things is huge. And you're right. It is a huge reminder of what is going on, why we're doing this, creating and sometimes even creating a world, a magical world of escape for so many kids or adults even that are suffering daily, that that's their escape. That's their one time a day, two times a day, whatever, that they can, you know, exhale and right. be in a world of magic and not be completely caught up in a new medicine or a new whatever or pain even I mean, it is powerful, Carrie. I mean, it is really powerful and it's a huge responsibility, you know? It's also a reminder of the good in the world. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. It's the amount of good. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, sure. the people, the, every aspect of that mm -hmm. is such a great reminder. Yeah, it is. It is. And it still goes on. But when you're in those moments that you get to be a part of, you just don't forget those. You know, you really no. don't forget those. Yeah. And I think sometimes often I'll think about those families that we were so l lucky to meet and where they are now and that probably their loved one has passed on and, you know, they're still living. And those those are the pictures they have. Those are the memories they can go back to. They're not going to go back to the memories of the hardest parts. They're going to go back to the memories of the joy that they got to experience. And man, that's huge to be a part of someone's history, you know? Well, I do. I, I've got the wildest story that just happened. My yeah. stepdaughter, who's now 19, just yeah. went to Wales. Um, for spring break to go Amazing. visit uh, a camp counselor, a friend of hers. They worked together during yeah. the summer's camp counselor. And so she went to Wales to go visit her for a week. And she walked in the door and there's a picture of her when she was a child with Barney. Oh. And it was me. Oh. I, was, I was the Barney that performed in Wales. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 30 something years ago. My gosh, what are the chances? And my stepdaughter's that like, um, um that's... and we get on, you know, we get on FaceTime. Oh. And so I can say hello to her. And it just oh, brings a smile. She's like, oh my God, all the the it just was one of my happiest times in life. And that's what I absolutely it's still there. It's still Everything happening. We all did, know. you know, all your dances are still on YouTube. Yeah. All oh. we did and all the good is still yeah. out there. It's still there and it still means so much. I mean, you know what, it, that's huge, even for kids that are like older teens or adults that can say, oh, like, I mean, that's how I felt when I watched you being lowered down from that truck. Like I wasn't like all of a sudden for a minute, I was not your choreographer or your performance director. I was like, Lindy, just going, please hug me, please hug me. You know, it just... <laughs> It's amazing. And I did. I walked right up and I went, can I have a hug, please? And I'd already hugged you that morning, right. but it's like I was hugging Barney and it just is, I, I don't know. I just think for me, that time in my life, I consider a privilege, you know, I oh. consider it a privilege that Absolutely. I got to be a part of that, that I got to watch the hilarious things that happened and, and feel that kind of laughter. And, um, and that kind of love and that sort of responsibility, you know, it was huge.
Yeah. And you know, the other, the misconception, which I always love being able to tell the, what really happened is, and you, yeah. you can contest to this, so which is people go, Oh, you did all those make a wishes. They had to have been so sad. I never saw sadness. Yeah. I never saw sadness in any no. hospital room. I ever went, I went in thousands of them. Yeah. It was always yeah. happy. We were aware of what was going on, right? We for knew this sure, for sure. 100%. Yeah. But because the kid was so happy, yes, parents happy and it brought you yeah. happy and the sadness yeah. was really gone. Yeah. The, and it, the it, tears were tears of joy because for sure this because kid could happen. Their best friends. That's exactly right. Yeah. And it is just so powerful. Yeah. To see kids reaching out. I mean, kids in wheelchairs or that had very little, you know, they it was just beautiful and so powerful. Um, something popped in my head, Carrie. This is kind of changing the subject, but yeah. you know, one day, one, I can't remember what episode it was, but Brian was directing, Brian Mack was yeah. directing, and we were in the caboose and we were having technical issues. Things were not working. So, but we were still trying to get stuff done. And I think like communication between the voices had gone out and things like that. And they were working on a scene. So it wasn't really something that I, and we were trying to clear out people to get less people in the room so we could right. get, it was, it was a little tense, but it was also kind of like, wow, here we go. We got to keep going, you know? Right. So I went in the lounge with the voices and I was like, I'll just kind of run back and forth if I need to. But it was going to be, it was going slower, obviously, because there was no, you know, we, communication was down. So I was in the lounge and Julie was like, why don't you put on a movie? It's going to be a long day. Have you seen Dream Girls yet? And I, you know, it was when the movie Dream Girls had come out yeah. and I was like, okay, so I put it on and I'm kind of watching, but I'm also kind of peeking out the door every so often. Do I need to do something? And it gets this really intense time and Dream Girls and I'm like, super emotional and Brian comes running in and he goes hey and then he looked at me and he went are you crying <laughs> I said no no I'm not crying no sir I'm not crying everything's fine let's keep going what do you need me to do and he just like rolled his eyes and started laughing like going this is the most ridiculous day I've ever worked in my life and I was like I know but here we are so what are we gonna do next you know but I just remember him like he was rushing and then he just completely stopped and looked at me and went, are you crying? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not crying. I'm not crying, sir. Let's go back to work. It's all fine. It was just so many days like that were just like, you didn't know what the day was going to bring. You didn't, know, everything was like, uh-oh, okay, doesn't matter. What are we going to do? Problem solved, moving on. We got to keep going. We'll figure it out, you know? And I mean, for a while, I feel like I would go, I would go to the voice room and tell them something. I would come back out and tell you something and we would just keep shooting, you know, we just, you just made it work. And then there were 20 people somewhere trying to fix everything. Right. And all of a sudden we'd come back and we'd be like, ah, got it done. Here we go. We're still moving. We're still going. But oh, it just, there were so many. And I also loved Carrie talking about you know, make a wish and all, but I, I also really loved watching your interactions with the kids working on the show because that was a lot for them. They had a lot to remember. They had a lot to do. They were trying to keep up with their schoolwork. They were some fairly young, fairly yeah. young, yes. you know, and you know, the ways that y'all didn't just separate yourselves from them. You were like, we're a team. We're all working together. We all have to get through this together. How can I help you? Here's how you can help me. You know, you showing them the best way to hug you, the ways that they needed to approach you, all of that. So everything would go well. You put them at so much, e you, you put them at ease and therefore we got better results from them and they had a better experience, you know, because they felt like they were a part of a team with y'all. So I had, you know, again, having kids myself, I had such an appreciation for that. And I know there were days where you probably just wanted to go, okay, all right, off you go. You know, but you were, you know, we're all down. Here we go, moving on. <laughs> but, uh, you were kind and patient, but also, you know, there were rules. We had to, we needed to 
do that to get things done. Couldn't just be crazy on the set. You had to focus and get your work done, but they were still joyful. And we still were able to see the naturalness of children at play with their friends because they actually were at play with their friends. And so yeah. huge appreciation for that. Well, Lindy, it's been fun on this show. I've got to bring on several of the kids yeah. as adults yeah. now. And I just talked to one the other day and their memories is yeah. that everyone was so wonderful to work with and it was such a safe place. Yes. And I, they can't go and I've never heard a negative. It was hard. And they yeah. had a hard time. The, the hardest thing they had was going back, leaving Barney. Sure. You know, for them, yeah, you, you lose a job because you got older, not because of I anything know. else. And that's a, that's a very tough thing to do. For but, sure. you know, um, they yeah. just talk about everyone, the directors and the choreographers and right. the art department and how it was just this big family. And I love that. Yeah, I love that, too. And I love the care with which the company worked to create the magic to keep yeah. the magic because it could very quickly become not magical when you're right. seeing the things behind you know and I think even to the extent of sometimes losing a little bit of time maybe losing a little bit of money whatever to keep the magic for those kids on the set was so important and right. I really appreciated the company taking care with that you know, and saying, let's not lose the magic to just get, you know, I'm, I feel like I've heard stories that that wasn't always the case on every children's shooting, right. show, not at all. I think we're even finding out more and more as time goes by of incredibly unfortunate situations with children, right. you know? So that is something I will never, ever not say with pride right. that I worked on this show because there is nothing like that to be, it was goodness to the core. Absolutely. It really was, you know, and that, that wasn't true everywhere. And right. so that to me is something to be unbelievably proud of and, and it still makes it special. Yes. You know, it makes it stand alone. The things that children were seeing at home were true there as well. Right. They were true on the set. They were true afterwards. They were true all the time. Even when we, like you say, you know, interviewing them, running into these kids, uh, just, you know, being able to wrap them in your arms and go, I care so much about you. I'm so glad your life is wonderful. And I'm glad our paths got to cross, you know, uh, it, it, it's great. great. I just did senior pictures for one of the kids, now a high schooler, <laughs> that was on the tour with me. Yeah. <laughs> what? You know, yeah. I know. I'm like, this is the craziest thing ever. But yeah. the relationships and all that stuff stay the same. You're there. I, I had been waiting. I knew this episode was going to be this fun. Yeah. And I think. <laughs> Lindy, it's yes. better than I thought it was going to be. Oh, so sweet. You're so sweet. And I can it's tell you now, you'll be getting another phone call from me because there's got to be a second version of this. Because <laughs> There's more. Well, it's funny because it's just, I'm sure you experience this every time, but the more you start to talk, the more things pop in your head. I know for the next week, literally, I'm going to go, what about the time this happened? What about right. the time? They just, all those memories are so special. They're there. I'm going to sit tonight and send you some pictures that I still carry on my phone because they just give me so much joy to bring them to pop up and go, oh my gosh. Yep. Yep. I remember that. You know, it's just, it was a really special time. It was hard work. There is yeah. no doubt about it. It was hard, hard work, but it was so like the joy of doing really hard work for goodness is the best, the absolute best. So Absolutely. I cherish our time together Love and always me too. send me those pictures. Cause I'll put them I'll in do the, it. some of these in the back end of this thing. So some people yeah. can see, Love see it. these amazing times and Lindy, yeah. I just can't even, I can't uh, words of seeing you again and talking. I, I know <laughs> it's so fun. I do. I would give anything to just be able to click fingers and go back for a few days and just experience the joy. Cause it was so joyful. I'd it have was, to stretch a little bit more these days. Yes, well, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Hey, soft shoe. We could still do a soft shoe. It's totally fine. You know, I, I, I don't know if you know this, but you know, I got the opportunity to, to do it again in um, six years ago. Oh, uh, 
So I was 50. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. Five years ago, I was 50 years old and they called me up and they needed me to go to Connecticut to do this. And my mom goes, you think this is a good idea? And I said, there's no stopping me. Yeah. Don't eat, you might as well. There's I no don't believe that. I, I, I do believe that. I absolutely believe that. There is and no I, stopping you. Never I has had several people say to me, are you sure this is a good idea? It's happening. Yeah. There is yeah. no way yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. And it was absolutely magical. I ran out and did bell kicks and the whole thing and oh, paid yeah. for it. But I'm telling you. I wish I had been there. Yeah. The magic of it, of, of yeah. that character and the importance and all of that is just, it's, it's incredible. Huge. And yeah. as we end this episode, I talk really quickly because you're doing all these amazing things. Oh, thank you. Well, the theater you know, groups. I, I, yeah, when, once Barney kind of uh, stopped for us, um, I had already been kind of involved in a lot of different theaters and, and all of that. And I've just had such pleasure working for a lot of different places, including, you know, a church and, you know, figuring out things for them. But for the last nine years, I've been at a fine arts school in Fort Worth where it's a charter school and kids have to, you know, do audition to become right. part of the school. And so, they do have a huge interest in somewhere in the fine arts world there. That's what they want to do. And so for me to be able to kind of continue teaching and sharing the things that we've done and boy, you better believe that I tell them stories, Barney stories, every one of my classes, <laughs> I do. And they love it. They're just like, the, they're just eyes wide going, tell us more about that. Um, but it, it's a joy and I get to direct shows and, you know, teach and, um, do all of these great things. And I, I have really loved it. And I just kind of continue to find little areas where I can go, oh, I would love to be a part of that musical or that camp or whatever. And so I just plan on like you saying, you're not going to stop me. That's just kind of how I feel. Right. I, I feel like as long as I have something to share, as long as I have something that I can give to someone else or the world or whatever, I'm going to keep doing that because it's just incredibly joyful and it's, it's what I do. So I, I want to keep doing it, but, but it's been great. And, and life is just taking me down lots of little paths that I've just followed and gone, well, this is a fun one, but boy, I will <laughs> never forget those five, six years for me. They are in a special place in my heart and always will be. There's just nothing like it, nothing like it, you know? So it has been a thrill to be with you today. It really has. Oh. I, I know it's just, it kind of makes me feel young again. I want to see those bell kicks, Carrie. I want to see them. <laughs> oh my gosh. So do I. <laughs> were you, were, you do have to tell me the truth though. After that five years ago, were you a little bit sore? When you uh, got probably, to a, probably a touch, probably yeah. a touch. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I keep, I still keep in shape and good. And it's muscle memory too. You did it for it long. Is. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I love well, and, it. Well, and I don't know if you know, when I did that event, yeah, the, the host was Christine Baranski. Oh my gosh, how great. So I walked on the stage to meet her in rehearsal yeah. for the first time and she grabbed me, not Carrie, but Barney. Yeah, yeah. She said, my grandbabies oh. love you to death. And You're to like, see yes. that kind of stuff, because once again, yeah, they're a parent. The celebrity is gone, and they're a parent, and they had that's she had right. the same reaction you're talking about me coming down there. Yes, that's and exactly it is right. So cool. Yeah, what that purple dinosaur means to people, and and it's all the good true. and love and beautiful aspects. Yeah, that that's that right. purple dinosaur has given to the world. It's unbelievable, and it's still going. And yeah. I think we knew this at the time when things started to wind down, that that you weren't it just wasn't going to go away, right. but it has been to me so beautiful to see in the way that it has not gone away. It yeah. just continues. And yeah, I, it's still out there. And I, I hope it will be for years and years and years to come because there's nothing like it. There's nothing else you know, like it. It really isn't. So what a joy. I mean, we are lucky, aren't we? I mean, we that, that is, and just to, to be a part of helping create that magic, like you said, just coming in and going, how can I put my touch on this? How can I make it a little bit different? 
How can I challenge people? How can I, I mean, that's a privilege. Right. It really is. It's a privilege. So anyway, you're the best for having me today. Thank oh, you. I love I, you to death. And it's I so love you to death to too. You too, sweetness. And yeah, let's do it again. We've got to get, we've got to sit down and have, you know, a meal together, all of us, and just say all these things and laugh hard again, like we have, because it's, it's all still there, you know, that to be arranged. <laughs> I'm counting on it. I will be there. I will be the first one there. I cannot wait. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on, Lindy. Thank you, Carrie. Anytime. It has been a joy. I will be happy the rest of the day. I, I really it. will. I, I mean, love how it. can you not? The stories are so great. Love you to pieces. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Purple Roads. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and heart open, and you'll find your Purple Road. We'll see you real soon.